All right, let's get started. Welcome to Material Science and Engineering 405, Physics of Solids. My name is Mark Hurston. I'll be the instructor for this quarter. I'd like to begin by introducing myself and then introducing the TAs for the course. Uh, so I'll give you a brief autobiography. I grew up in Downers Grove, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago, about 45 minute drive from here. Attended Downers Grove South High School and then went to the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign for a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Following my time in Urbana, I then went to Argonne National Laboratory where I worked in the energy technology and material science divisions on surface acoustic wave based sensors trying to detect inert gases such as helium. Following that, I attended the University of Cambridge in the UK where I studied physics at the Cavendish Laboratory. And in Cambridge, the way that they study physics is a little different than here in that I took 10 courses and a course there consisted of literally four one-hour lectures from a professor and a book list with as many as 10 to 15 books on that book list. And then we had about six months to go back to our dorms, learn the material and then show up at the end of the spring quarter to demonstrate our knowledge of that material. So there was very little feedback, no homework assignments, no hour exams, only this large cumulative final exam, and that's where I learned solid state physics. So I'm essentially self-taught, or at least taught in the Cambridge style. So you're gonna be hearing my take on solid state physics in this course. Following my time in Cambridge, I then attended the University of Illinois again, uh, pursuing a PhD in electrical engineering at the Beckman Institute, which is a multidisciplinary research institute in Urbana. Uh, my committee consisted of material science, electrical engineering, chemistry, and physics faculty, so the training was quite diverse. And as a result, uh, when I graduated, I had a couple of options in front of me, and I chose to come here to Northwestern. Incidentally, during my PhD, I spent some time at IBM TJ Watson Research Center where I was working with Dr. Faye Navoris on multi-wall carbon nanotube charge transport. So that's my background. For the past six years, I've been here at Northwestern, and this is the first time I've taught this particular course. However, I have taught the undergraduate version of this course many times, and also the follow-on course, Material Science and Engineering 451, several times. So I'm trying to target this course somewhere in the middle. So that's my background. Uh, I'll now introduce Nathan Yoder, who's one of the TAs for the course. All right, um, so my name is Nathan Yoder. I'm a fifth year material science uh, graduate student in the Hurston Group, and um, I did my undergrad at Purdue University in the material and uh, did that for four years. And I've been here for four years as well. So I primarily work with the uh, UHP and cryogenic uh, studies of uh, stability of organic molecules. Um, I've taken both this course and the follow-up course 451, and I've also TA'd uh, 451, so hopefully uh, both myself and Dave Comstock, who's the other TA, will be uh, available to help out. Um, and we've got office hours twice each. All three of us have office hours uh, each week for two hours, so we'll try and make ourselves available for uh, assisting you guys and anything. So feel free to contact us. Um, obviously, we, we'd like it uh, as much as possible if you could uh, bring your questions to office hours and not, you know, bother us at all hours of the night. But uh, we are available and um, should be a fun semester. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other TA is Dave Comstock. Dave is also a graduate student in my group, and he is actually split between three locations, Evanston Campus, the Chicago campus where we have an atomic force microscope that he utilizes in his research and also Argonne National Laboratory where he does a variety of thin film deposition techniques. So today he's at Argonne, so he couldn't be here. Uh, but he'll come tomorrow and you'll get to uh, meet him. And all of us have office hours, as Nathan mentioned. I finally want to introduce John Ireland, who's the man behind the camera. John's a postdoc uh, in my group. Uh, he's part of the National Center for Learning and Teaching uh, which is focusing on nanoscale science and engineering education. Part of that program is to try to establish 
gather and disseminate content in the area of nanoscale science and engineering. Clearly, quantum mechanics and solid state physics are foundation concepts for nanotechnology. And as a result, all of my courses have been videotaped in the past. They're all available on the internet, in fact. So if you're interested in seeing previous lectures from Material Science and Engineering 351, or 451 for that matter, they're available at any time. And as a result, since we've never taught 405 before, we're going to be videotaping it. So I try to make the videotape uh, have as little impact as possible on our interaction in class. I don't speak to the camera. I will happily take your questions at any time. Uh, so my first priority is to you. But we want to have this experience documented uh, for that purpose. And also for you, if you want to go back and view a lecture, you'll be able to do that. Or if you miss class, you can view the lecture at your leisure. Okay. You should have in front of you a several handouts. And I'd just like to go over them each uh, to get the bureaucracy out of the way. And then we can jump right into the heart of the matter, which is quantum mechanics, our first topic. The first sheet I'm looking at is the course description. It says physics of solids at the top. It includes some details on where to find me and my office hours Wednesday 2 to 4 p.m. One thing you notice is that this course is offered five days a week nominally, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 1 o'clock in this room. However, as you'll see in the syllabus in a minute, uh, there have already been 10 of these classes canceled. Uh, the reason why I did this is that I have to travel a lot, and by reserving this room five days a week, I don't have to worry about rescheduling other rooms, trying to find a time when we're all available. Basically, we'll meet whenever I'm in town, and we'll be able to meet the 35 to 40 lecture hour standard for this course. In the past, this has been a four uh, class per week, 10 week long course. So right now, we have 40, lectures, uh, four lecture, 40 lecture hours available to us. I think we could probably cut a couple of those. If I have to go out of town, we'll do that. Otherwise, if we get ahead, I'll just cancel class. So stay tuned to those cancellations. They're all in the syllabus for what I know at this point. The description of the course is introduction to quantum mechanics and solid state physics. And specific topics include free electron behavior, potential energy wells and barriers, energy band theory, phonons, and electrical properties of metals and semiconductors. This course is one uh, which has been historically difficult to teach because the backgrounds of incoming graduates to our department vary significantly. Some of you may have been physicists as undergraduates and already had quantum mechanics and solid state physics at a level as high or even higher than this course. If you think that is the case after seeing a couple lectures and seeing the syllabus, seeing the textbooks, then let me know. Uh, you can exempt out of this course and move directly to 451, which we taught in the spring. Some of you may be chemists or material scientists at a university where quantum mechanics was not required. You may have never heard of quantum mechanics or seen the Schrodinger equation before. If that's the case, then you have a couple of options. One is to drop this course, take 351 in the winter, which I'll be teaching, and that starts from no knowledge of quantum mechanics and builds you up to this level, and then take 405 next fall. And this will not delay graduation or anything. There's no negative consequence if you fall into that category. Or if you don't want to do that and you want to try 405, then as I mentioned, 351, every lecture note, every video lecture, all the homework is available online. And you may want to look at the appropriate lectures from 351 before coming to 405 for that week. If you look at the syllabi for 351 and 405, you'll see that they're essentially the same. Obviously, in 405, we're going to be treating quantum mechanics and solid state physics at a higher level and moving more quickly. But if, for example, you're weak in three-dimensional solution to the Schrodinger equation, you could review those lectures from 351 and then come to 405 and probably be able to keep up. Uh, that's up to you. It's basically your decision. If you want to talk to me further about it, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but basically, you can go home and drop this course if you feel you're too advanced or would like to review 351 before moving on. Are there any questions or concerns about that issue? OK. If not, if we keep going through this sheet, you'll see the teaching method roughly are an average four 50-minute lectures per week. There'll be discussion, lectures, 
homework exams, and you'll see on the syllabus how many there are. There's six, one midterm and one final exam. Your grades will be 